Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric, I'm glad you can make it. Today we're gonna to be making the classic Italian hunter's salami, also known as the cacciatore salami. This salami is great, it's seasoned very simply, a lot of flavor. Let me show you how to make it. We're gonna be using all pork for this recipe, but feel free to mix it up if you have some venison or if you have some beef that you wanna add. You just wanna to try to have a 30% fat to 70% lean pork shoulder, kind of already has that naturally, so you don't have to do anything too special to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our meat prepared for the grinder. And depending on the grinder that you have, will inevitably determine how you process your cuts. If you have a large grinder, like a number 22 or a number 32, then you can make long strips like I'm doing here because the motor is generally strong enough to grab it and pull it through without it bogging down. But if you have a KitchenAid grinder or a number eight or a number 12, you wanna make your cuts a little bit smaller, maybe even small cubes or small chunks. So you'll know when you start to process it. If you're having a hard time grinding it, just make the cuts a little bit smaller. We're now gonna do the exact same thing, but with the fat portion of this recipe. And be sure to check the description box below because I'm gonna have a link to the recipe. You can adjust the quantities, all that good stuff. And once we get everything processed, we're gonna pop that into the freezer so that we can chill it. And then we're gonna grind it. Our meat's been ground on a six millimeter plate. It's nice and cold, and we're now going to add some of our spices. And the profile for this particular recipe is really simple. Salt, sugar, pepper, cure number two. Um, nothing too complicated. We have some garlic and wine that's uh, been sitting on the counter for about five or six hours. We're gonna add that to the meat. But you can get crazy with this recipe. If you wanna make it spicy, put some Calabrian pepper or some cayenne pepper. If you want to do the fennel route, you can add fennel to it. I mean, really, you can have a lot of fun with this sausage. I wanted to keep it pretty simple. And once we get our spices and our wine and garlic mixed, I'm just going to put that into a separate bowl, cover it, and refrigerate it. We want this to rest in the refrigerator overnight. So we're going to pop that in the fridge, and that's going to help develop its flavor, extract some protein. And the next day, it's now time to finish our salami. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare some mold. Now this is optional. Technically, you don't need to do this, but if you do this, you're going to almost guarantee that you're not gonna have any unwanted bad molds grow on your salami. So we're just gonna prepare that mold culture first thing in the morning. We're also going to prepare our starter culture. This is a fermented sausage, and we ferment our sausage by using beneficial bacteria that produce lactic acid. Now you could do it naturally if you know how to do that, or you can buy a commercially obtained starter culture like this one called Flavor of Italy. We got that through the sausage maker and it's going to add the beneficial bacteria that you need, which is gonna guarantee proper fermentation and a safe product. So we're just gonna mix that in with a little bit of water and let it rehydrate for about half an hour. The last thing we're gonna prepare is our casing. We're using 61 millimeter casing protein line. So by far, probably my favorite casings to use. This is also from the sausage maker, and we're just going to let those soak for about 15 minutes in some lukewarm water. So now that all of our elements are done, let's make our salami. Our meat has just come out of the fridge. It's very cold, and that's one of the key elements to making good sausage or salami is to make sure that your meat is cold through the entire process. So with our cold meat added to our mixer, we're now gonna go ahead and add our starter culture. So what's going on when you add this starter culture? Well, the minute you add this starter culture, you're adding live and active bacteria to your meat, and that bacteria is going to consume the sugar in your recipe. All the while, it's gonna produce lactic acid, lowering the pH, giving you a safe product that's inhospitable to bad bacteria. You're gonna mix your meat until it's super sticky, just like that, and once it's sticky, it's time to stuff it into your casing. And unlike sausage making, salami making is a little different in the sense that you really, really want to pack it in there tight. So when you're stuffing your salami, just make sure you pack it in there really tight. And when you're finished, you're always going to have a little bit of meat left over, either in the horn or in the hopper. So what we're going to do with that meat, this is what was left over from me. And I'm just going to take a tiny piece of that mince and set it on some cling film. And the rest of that, I'm just going to place in the uh, casing with the rest of the salami. The reason we want to do this is because our salami needs to ferment. 
And at a certain point, we're going to want to test the pH to determine whether it's ready to start drying. And so rather than disrupt the larger salami, which is already in its casing, to test the pH, we're going to use that small little mince that we just separated to test the pH of that. And it's going to tell us everything we need to know. So now that we have that separated, we're just going to set that to the side and finish processing our salami. The last couple things we have to do starts with pricking your salami with a sausage pricker or a pin or a needle or something like that. You want to make sure it's sterilized. And you want to make sure that there's no air pockets. Air pockets typically tend to breed unwanted molds. And so you want a skin tight covering. And so I just go ahead and generously prick the entire salami. Next, you are going to brush your salami down with mold or rub it down with mold. And like I said, this is an optional step. So if you're not going to be applying mold, obviously you won't be doing this. And then we're going to weigh our salami. We're going to write down the actual weight of the salami. And then we're going to write our target weight. I like to target a 35 to 40% weight loss. So for me, when my salami gets to 622 grams, then it's going to be ready to eat. And now we ferment our salami. Fermenting your salami simply means putting it in the right condition so that the bacteria can thrive. I'm going to be placing this inside of my smoker, which for lack of a better way to say it, it's just acting as a box. It's got a tray of water in it. And underneath that tray of water, I've got a 100 watt incandescent light inside that little tray, which normally holds wood. I'm using a controller from Inkbird, and I've set the controller to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and 72 is what it is now. So what happens is that light bulb is connected to the heating port, and as the temperature fluctuate, that light is gonna turn on or off automatically, maintaining a 75 degree Fahrenheit temperature inside of that box. And for this starter culture, that's a very nice temperature to ferment. So the parameters for fermentation, this is going to take between 18 to 24 hours. Your temperature range needs to be between 75 and 85 Fahrenheit or 24 and 29 Celsius. And the humidity needs to be high, 90% at least. After about 20 hours, we're going to test the pH. And this is a great, very predictable starter culture. Generally, if you follow my recipes, and you use flavor of Italy, you can get to the right pH in less than 24 hours, which is pretty quick. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to test the pH. And what we're looking for is a pH between 4.9 and 5.2. And when it comes to salami making, anything under 5.2 is considered the safe zone. So let's take a look at our meat. And you're going to notice that if proper fermentation has occurred, your meat will have a more bound together texture. It's going to be more like a solid mass rather than the ground meat you started off with. So let's go ahead and test the pH. And testing the pH is very quick and easy. Uh, we're using an Apera Instruments pH meter. And all you do is you stick that into the meat and wait till the meter gives you a stable reading. For Apera Instruments, the stable reading is indicated by a smiley face on the screen. And we got our smiley face. And it looks like my reading is 4.98, well within my range. And so now it's time to start drying. So we're going to take our salami out of the fermentation box and place it into a drying chamber. Now this is simply a modified refrigerator where I get to control the humidity and the temperature. If you have a relatively cool area in your home with high humidity, you can place this salami in there, which is the way it was traditionally done. So this is our drying chamber. And if you wanna see how we built this drying chamber, be sure to check out that link in the top right hand corner. At this point, we're just gonna close the door and allow our salami to dry. This particular process takes anywhere between six to eight, maybe even 12 weeks, depending on the diameter of your salami casing. In our case, 61 millimeter normally takes me about 60 days. The temperature inside this drying chamber is an average of 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius, and the humidity is going to stay at an average of 80%. For this particular salami, we're gonna be targeting a 40% weight loss, and that's gonna give us a more firm salami. But if you like your salami on the softer side, with the texture of, let's say, like a prosciutto or a culatello, then you may wanna pull it at 30% or even 35%. Either case, once you get to 30%, you can start tasting your salami, and as soon as you're pleased with the results, your salami is finished. Personally, I like a more firm salami, so I tend to let mine go to 40%. Our cacciatore salami has been in the drying chamber for about 60 days. When I squeeze it, it feels uniformly dried throughout. That means that the outer edge of the salami feels the same as the center. If your humidity in your drying chamber was too low, or if you had too much airflow, then an outer ring can form on your salami, and that's typically called dry ring. And dry ring happens when the outside of your salami tends to dry faster than the inside. 
Under most circumstances, dry ring isn't that big of a deal, but if you are getting a dry ring in your salami, then you definitely want to go back and check your humidity settings or the airflow inside your chamber so that you can try and produce a salami with no dry ring. In a later video, we'll cover some of the most common problems associated with salami making, how to troubleshoot them and overcome them so that you can take your salami making game to the next level. Let's take the casing off of the salami, slice it up, and see what it tastes like. Okay, time for the moment of truth. How does it taste? 60 days of drying. It looks great. So we got nice marbling. It's bound together well. When we tug it, it doesn't, you know, rip pretty easy. And that means we got a nice bind during the mixing stage. Uh, smells amazing. Let's give it a little taste and see what happens. Mm. That's delicious. And I think what I like about it the most is that none of the ingredients are overpowering. I mean, you've got the garlic and the wine, but the superstar of this salami is the pork. And there's a beautiful sweetness that comes along with it, a nice fermented flavor. And that's how we made the Italian cacciatore salami. I hope you get a chance to make it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you got anything out of this video or you found it entertaining in any way, a thumbs up would be helpful. If you like what you saw, and you'd like to see more, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell. We post new videos each week. We'll see you in the next one.